Okay, we finally got our Sabrin NVMe M.2 PCI adapter to plug in our SSD. This is the second team group MP33 SSD that we received. I mentioned previously, I was gonna put this into an external USB-C adapter but I couldn't find one that was a reasonable price and had reviews that indicated that it was a reliable device. So I just decided I probably won't use a one terabyte NVMe SSD externally very often. I have other ones, you know, 250 gig Kingston SSDs that are fast enough and I barely use those. So I decided to go with a PCI Express card so that I can add a fourth NVMe SSD to my rig. I will probably make better use of it that way with an extra one terabyte SSD in there, but I didn't have another SSD slot. The rig that I'm on right now only has three NVMe slots, but I do have spare PCIe slots. So we'll go ahead and set this onto, we'll set this onto here get the heatsink on and we will plug it into our system. So look, we've already opened one of these and taken a look at it. So let's take a look at what we have here. So this is the Sabrent version. I've seen a lot of information and reviews on this brand and I believe it's a pretty good brand. They have good quality SSDs and they're very fast and they also have very large capacity ones. We'll go over the features. It's pretty simple. It's just a PCI card that you can put an NVMe drive on, plug it into your PCIe slot and have access. Okay, so this one is meant for PCIe NVMe drives, not SATA, which this one is not. This is a PCIe Gen 3 by 4X NVMe drive. It is M key. You can plug it into any one of the PCI 16, 8, or 4 slots. It is a PCI 4X card, and it's compatible with these sizes of drives. So the 30 millimeter, 42 millimeter, 60, and 80 millimeter. And it says here, it won't go into a PCI 1 slot because it's a PCI 4X card. So let's open it up and take a look at what we get inside. So it's got a couple Oh, this is good. So this is pretty cool. You don't see this often. The tape that holds this shut actually has little blue area to grab it so that you can get it open without needing a knife or scissors. Thanks, Sabrent. I appreciate it. But then they make it difficult to pull this package out. Okay, so it's nicely packaged. Let's see what we get. We get some instruction cards on how to install the heatsink. As we reviewed, I'll link right up here that adding a heatsink to your NVMe SSD does improve performance. Some troubleshooting information there. Okay, two year Sabrent warranty. Make a review. That's what we're doing now. Okay, awesome. It comes with a little screwdriver as well. It's packaged quite nicely in this uh, foam. So it's not just a piece of plastic. This is actually, this is actually foam. So that's pretty nice. Okay, it's got a solid weight to it. Try and get this screwdriver out. And a little tiny screwdriver. And that's to take off these so that we can remove these for the heat sink and then reattach them 
with our drive in it. So it doesn't feel very plastically plasticky. It feels pretty solid. It's got a good weight to it, meaning that this is going to dissipate heat quite well. So let's unscrew these four screws and we'll put our drive in. And the little screwdriver works quite well. Okay, awesome. And this just goes to show the quality that Sabrent provides to its customers. You get different size thermal pads to connect your heat sink to the drive. So you'll be able to, you should be able to see the difference in thickness here. You get a thick one and a thin one. So I guess depending on the drive that you're going to be adding, you can select which one as long as it's making contact here with your heat sink. So that's excellent. You can probably stack two of these if you have an extra slim drive, or you can go with just a thin one if the chips on it are thicker. So we'll probably try to use a thin one. We'll see which one we have to use when we get this drive out of here. Okay, and I think I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the last one. I'll peel off this sticker without breaking it very gingerly. And on the back of, I'll place it on the back of here. So we'll install our drive. I don't know if it came with... Okay, so the attachment portion so the shape of this is like a little T shape. So the drive will fit into there and you take the screw off the bottom side here and insert that into the drive. So the drive has a little U shape on it that will fit snugly right inside of here like so. Okay, so it fits like that. So let's attach that. We'll use our small screwdriver again. And don't let this roll away. Okay, so if you have a different size drive, this is the 80 millimeter. If you have a 60, if you have a 60 millimeter or a 42 millimeter, you would just attach this into one of these different holes, depending on the size of your drive. And just like that, we'll get our screw. So now we want to test fit to see which thermal pad we want to use. I don't think that this one is going to be thick enough to make contact between this and this. So what I'll do is actually, I'm just gonna peel up the sticky side of this just to show you, I don't think it's making contact. We'll put this in here like so. I'll put this on top and if the thermal pad sticks to the drive, then we have contact and we can use this one. Okay, I'll give it a little push. 
and then we'll pull it out. It did make contact just a little bit. But I think just to be safe, I'm going to use the thicker pad. We'll try and get this back on here. Just to save it. Maybe we'll make use of it another time. But we'll use this thicker pad and there should be no problem. So just remember to peel off the plastic protectors or else this will not work as well as you think it would. Man, this thing just becomes like a floppy noodle. on top okay so it's definitely in there it no screws it is sticking down just the way we want okay and we'll reapply our back covers to hold everything together and you can see here that the back cover so maybe you can't see has little notches put into it so this will only go on to here because the screw right here so the screw needs to line up to one of these notches or else the cover won't go on so this needs to go this way and then we can put our screws in And make sure you don't you double check that because you don't want to screw this down without that hole there. You might crack a PCB or something like that. They could have added those little notches on both sides of this piece of metal and kind of just been done with it. You wouldn't have to figure that out. Would have been a pretty easy solution. Okay, we're all set up. We'll plug this into a PCIe 4X slot and give it a test, see how well it runs. Let me power off the machine and plug it in. Okay, we're back into Windows after installing the PCI Express card with our one terabyte NVMe drive on it. And we can see here, it doesn't show up. This is the original one that we received and it is starting to get data on it. So let's take a look at how to initiate that drive. We'll right click and go to disk management. And right away we get a pop-up to initialize a new disk so we'll just click ok gpt is fine for this nvme drive and we can see here that we have disk 3 950 unallocated and unlabeled so let's do a new simple volume f is fine and this is going to be our team group pcie NVMe drive and we'll just leave the other settings default since it's a new drive Actually, I'm gonna add one TV there and that's that so some of you might have noticed the slot that I put this in if we look up the specs for that motherboard that PCI slot shares 
the PCI speed with the NVMe drive that's in the third slot, which is the other team group drive. So both of these drives are now working at 2x instead of 3x. So I want to test the speed if I copy a large file from one to the other. So we're just going to copy a Windows Server ISO and we'll see the speed we get. Awesome speeds, 1.3 gigabytes. Great. Now let's see our speed going from one team group to the other. Okay, so this is the new PCIe team group drive and this is the one that's connected directly to the board. So let's take a look at the speed there. Super quick. I don't think I will notice the speed difference here. Let's delete this one. And this is a 4.2 gigabyte file. Let's see if we can saturate that with a larger file. Okay, so we have a large video file here. We'll copy that. This is from the Samsung C drive. So we're getting a pretty good stable speed, 1.8 gigabytes per second. And then we'll copy it from team group drive to team group drive, just to see how splitting the 4X PCI bus affects this. and it doesn't look like it has at all. Okay, we can check out the manual for the Gaming 7. This motherboard. We'll see that we plug this into the PCI by 4 slot. Even The slot is a 16x size slot, but it runs at, at 4x. So we'll go down here and we'll see here. The PCI Express 16x slot that's running at 4x, PCIe X4, shares the bandwidth with the M2P32G connector. The X4 slot will operate up to 2X or X2 mode when there is a PCI installed on this connector, which there is, and that is our team group NVMe SSD. Okay, so I don't see a huge speed difference in this. Maybe if we're copying multiple files over there. It seems to be going the one and a half, 1.6, 1.5 gigabytes. Well, actually it's going 1.2, 1.3 gigabits per second that it was performing at previously. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. The extra one terabyte NVMe drive works well over the PCI bus. And that's that for this video. So thanks for watching. And I hope this video has given you some confidence to install some stuff like this. Maybe you're looking for a new PCIe NVMe drive and you don't have an NVMe slot on your board. This should work for you if you have a newer board. Uh, mind you, if you have a really old motherboard, you may have some configuration issues to support this type of NVMe drive. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.